Hey folks, I'm Brown Bear. Today I'll be talking about the DeepMind AlphaStar demonstration. AlphaStar is the first artificial intelligence to defeat a top professional player at StarCraft II. Before I get started, I'll give you an idea of my background. Many years ago, I was a top competitive player in the Age of Empires series. I started playing StarCraft II in 2015, and I currently rank around the top 5% of players in the world. A few years ago, I decided to start making content on computer game design, and I've produced a number of in-depth pieces on the title, including a deep dive into the game's competitive ladder, and an analytical review of the game's cooperative mode. StarCraft II is a military science fiction, real-time strategy game. At a competitive level, it's played almost entirely in a one versus one format. Players build an economy and train military units in order to defeat their opponents, all in real time. At the highest levels of play, the game becomes incredibly complex. Players deploy highly refined build orders in order to efficiently climb the technology tree, and they simultaneously leverage clean and heavily practiced mechanical control in order to execute effectively. Importantly, StarCraft is an imperfect information game. Players respond to their opponents and make adjustments to their build based off of incomplete information. Alpha Star is a StarCraft II artificial intelligence. According to its developers, it uses a deep neural network that's trained directly from raw game data. Alpha Star is structured as a large number of individual agents with individualized learning objectives. These agents compete with one another in a ladder-like environment called the Alpha Star League. The agent concept is fascinating to contrast with the human experience of playing StarCraft. Conceptually, there's a key distinction here. Human beings are a single agent with multiple potential playstyles, whereas Alpha Star is multiple distinct agents that were trained in parallel. This conceptual understanding is reinforced by the training time. Individual agents trained for up to 200 years, much more than a single human could practice anything. Logically, however, I think the two concepts are more similar than meets the eye. In a professional best of five, no human player will be exactly the same from game to game. Information encoded in their brain, electrical signals flowing through their muscles, even things like blood oxygen and blood sugar will change from moment to moment. It's more of a philosophical than a psychological idea, but a single player is an entirely different person from one game to the next. The only difference is that the quote-unquote agent that a player deploys in game N is highly correlated with the agent that a player deploys in game N plus 1, because players can't train playstyles in isolation. Everything ultimately comes from the same brain. AlphaStar has a bit of an advantage here in that it can train agents in parallel over time periods unattainable by individual humans. This means AlphaStar's strengths and weaknesses don't correlate as strongly from game to game as much as a human's would, at least in theory. You could argue that a more proper demonstration would require AlphaStar to individuate agents on an implicit rather than explicit level. In other words, instead of having multiple explicit agent instances, you'd have a single agent that's capable of many playstyles and has learned how to select from them using some sophisticated decision-making logic. To me, I think that's actually a pretty big step from the perspective of AI research, and I hope that the DeepMind team pursues it in the future. However, from the perspective of simply beating human opponents, I think the outcome is the same. AlphaStar is a single entity. Picking individual agents versus having a single agent that deploys multiple playstyles is more of an implementation detail than anything else. Next up, I'd like to talk about AlphaStar's mechanical control. The DeepMind team wrote a wonderful blog post on this most recent demonstration, and I highly recommend it if you're interested in this subject. The team made a very strong statement in that post with respect to AlphaStar's victories over TLO and Mana. I'll quote here. These results suggest that AlphaStar's success against Mana and TLO was in fact due to superior macro and micro strategic decision making, rather than superior click rate, faster reaction times, or the raw interface. I'll reiterate that this is a strong statement. Let me explain why. StarCraft II features a strong mechanical component. Executing better than your opponent gives you a substantial advantage. The title balances its mechanical component around the natural limits of human execution. For example, StarCraft features a mechanic called Splash Damage, where a unit's damage is spread out over a large area. This mechanic is balanced around the idea that humans aren't fast enough to perfectly split their forces to avoid these attacks. Because bots have unlimited actions, they could split their forces perfectly. This enabled them to win engagements that were impossible to win if you were a human. Now while this is a pretty fascinating insight into the game's design, it's ultimately not very interesting from the perspective of artificial intelligence. The machine isn't winning through smart strategic play or actual understanding of the game at hand. The quote from DeepMind promises something different, that AlphaStar beat a top professional player through genuinely better decision making. 
that would be truly historic. As a result, I'd like to go through the six games Mana played with AlphaStar and analyze them to test this statement. In Game 1, Alpha started a fairly uncommon proxy foregate. In fairness, even a low Grandmaster player can use cheesy strategies like this one to take the occasional game off of a professional. Nonetheless, this was still fascinating. The question for me is how Alpha Star decided to move up the ramp. Did it see an early Stargate and realize Mana's Immortal would be late? Or did it just move up the ramp because that's what it always seems to do, even when it's not a good idea? I'd love to see a graph of its internal win prediction over the course of this game. Game 2 gets a bit more complicated. Alpha Star gets up a much earlier Nexus because of its powerful multitasking. It focus fires two adepts, forces Mana to defend at home, and stands up a Nexus all within a few seconds. After that, it cleanly defended Mana's Oracle while harassing with its own Oracle Adept pressure at the same time. Then came the clearest indicator of a mechanical win with Mana's first push. Alpha Star achieves near perfect efficiency with its Phoenixes here keeping them in the battle as much as possible while also perfectly pulling them back when they're in danger. I'll slow this down so you can see what I mean. Notice how the phoenixes are grouped up together in a tight ball. Alpha Star manages to perfectly pull back the damaged phoenix while also controlling the rest of its forces correctly. This results in a very efficient trade in which Alpha Star takes heavy damage to four of its phoenixes but doesn't actually lose any of them. This enables a snowball victory later in the game. I still found this game interesting because Alpha Star's decision to oversaturate its main base enabled it to absorb harassment damage much more easily than mana. I tested this myself and confirmed that oversaturation is surprisingly efficient for the short time that it lasts. In any case, this is a strategic decision and it worked out well for Alpha Star, but I think it managed to gain and build upon this advantage through superior mechanical control. The Phoenix control was particularly insane. Game 3 was a more decisively mechanical win. Alpha Star used perfect Stalker Micro to gain an early game advantage. Of particular note is the predictive backoffs, in which Alpha Star used its perfect understanding of Stalker range to pull back damaged units before they were even in danger. This was followed up by flawless Phoenix Micro to slow down Mana's push and buy Alpha Star enough time to defend against Mana's attack. Game 4 was the most mechanical of the 5 wins. Let's examine the primary mid-game engagement in which Mana has a large Zealot Immortal Force going up against Alpha Star's pure stalker composition. In a typical professional game, you might label this as an even but unstable situation. Mana has a superior army composition, but Alpha Star has a superior economy with a third base. Mana needs to move across the map and win before Alpha Star's economy snowballs. Alpha Star needs to use Defender's advantage and good positioning to hold on with its inferior army while it techs up. But this is not how this game played out. As Mana moved out on the map, Alpha Star perfectly controlled three separate groups of units. The Northern Force of Stalkers blinked to take down an Oracle, the Southern Force of Stalkers was constantly trading with Mana's army, and the Eastern Force was carefully avoiding a Dark Templar. Simultaneous Blink Micro at three different locations enabled Alpha Star to take very efficient trades against a unit composition it normally shouldn't be able to. Alpha Star complemented this with some remarkably precise unit control. I've pulled up one example, although there are tons of these if you watch the replays closely. Here, Alpha Star blinks back its first Stalker to avoid an enemy Stalker. Then it allows Stalkers 2 and 3 to fire. Then it blinks them back to avoid other enemy shots. This happens in less than a second. It's difficult for a human to blink like this, let alone do it so consistently in so many places on the map all at the same time. This is typically why Immortals perform better against Stalkers than they did in this game. That leaves us with Game 5. Alpha Star gains a foothold on its shield battery push through simultaneous control of a probe, zealot, and stalker. It then loses an immortal to a force field, only to later win through perfect control of its units in the midst of shield batteries. I noticed something similar in game 5 as I did in game 2. Alpha Star almost always focus fires, yet it does this at the same time that it moves its units. Humans would sometimes attack move in this situation because moving the cursor forward to click an enemy unit and then moving it backward to move units back is quite difficult to do simultaneously. It would be unfair to claim that Alpha Star would have lost games 2 through 5 if it didn't have superior mechanical control. It's possible that, similar to game 1, it would have selected strategies and playstyles superior to Mana's. But I don't think the evidence for this is there. Two things jump out at me. First, on a tactical level, Alpha Star made a number of critical errors. For example, it routinely lost units to force fields, the most egregious instance occurring in game 5. It also forgot to focus fire its Oracle and Adept at the same probe in Game 2, 
enabling Mana's shield battery to be much more efficient than it otherwise would be. I found this notable because Alpha Star didn't do this for lack of mechanics. It actually focused fired probes independently, evidenced by the fact that its units didn't switch to attacking army units until the very end. The smart thing to do would have been to box the Adept and Oracle and focus fire them together. Not only would this require fewer actions, it probably would have done more damage. But Alpha Star made the higher APM, less tactically smart decision. Second, on a strategic level, Alpha Star didn't traverse the Protoss technology tree. I was very interested to see how it would respond to the information it scouted and the endgame army compositions it would select. But it didn't seem to do this. All it did was mass blink stalkers, even against the stalker's direct counter. This was particularly evident in game 6, where a single phoenix would have enabled Alpha Star to push back Mana's warp prism. Alpha Star chose instead to just keep building oracles. It seems to me that Alpha Star has learned how to put together great proactive strategies, but it has yet to really learn how to respond to its opponent. Now it's worth pointing out that a focus on a strong proactive strategy is a crucial insight into playing StarCraft II. It's a common low-level mistake to think that your primary role is to respond to your opponent instead of executing your own efficient build order. But at the level Alpha Star is playing at, I would expect some proper build order traversals as well in response to what it's scouting. Let's look back at that quote at the beginning and test it again. These results suggest that Alpha Star's success against Mana and TLO was in fact due to superior macro and micro strategic decision making, rather than superior click rate, faster reaction times, or the raw interface. After this analysis, I don't agree with this statement. I think Alpha Star won game 1 fair and square. But its victories in games 2 through 5 can't be separated from its superior mechanical control. You can see this in game 6, but before I talk about that, I'd like to talk about Alpha Star's actual mechanical setup. I decided to talk about this after the game by game analysis because I think knowing what Alpha Star's setup is biases your opinion as to whether it's really playing fairly. In games 1 through 5 against Mana, Alpha Star did not leverage a human like camera interface. Instead, it had visibility of the entire map. This meant that it didn't need to decide where to move its camera before taking actions. This explains the simultaneous blink micro in game 4. Alpha Star can control three different locations at once, because from its perspective, the entire map is just one big location. Alpha Star's APM is also a bit misleading. DeepMind put up this graphic showing that Alpha Star's average APM is only 277, but this neglects to mention that Alpha Star's APM peaks much higher than that. Again, going back to game 4, Alpha Star maintains 800 plus actions per minute over a sustained period of time. Note that Alpha Star is different from human players in that it has no incentive to spam unnecessary actions. These are both substantial advantages. In game 6, the Deep Mind team removed the first one. Alpha Star used a human like camera instead of being able to see the entire map. The results were immediately obvious. Alpha Star got very confused by Warp Prism Harass. In previous games, it showed the ability to split its forces, but here it kept bringing its entire army back and forth. Even more important was the final engagement, in which Mana's Immortals easily defeated Alpha Star Stalkers because it could no longer control them perfectly. Overall, I think that the 10 to 1 headlines are a bit misleading. I think it would be more accurate to say that Alpha Star went 1 and 1 against Mana. I also don't think you should include the games played against TLO, because he's not a professional Protoss player. I honestly don't understand the rush to proclaim victory. Deep Blue first lost to Kasparov before beating him a year later. I don't think anyone seriously believes that Alpha Star won't eventually get to the point where it beats everyone, even with severe mechanical limitations. But for me, as a StarCraft fan, I would appreciate the DeepMind team being a bit more open about the challenges they're facing, as well as the corners they're cutting, and how they plan to tackle them in the next demonstration. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about Alpha Star's decision making and some of the questions this demonstration raises. Let's go back to Game 4 against Mana. In the early game, Mana sends an oracle to attack Alpha Star's mineral line, which at that point was vulnerable. Alpha Star pushes the oracle back. More interestingly, it then positions stalkers in its mineral line to prepare for a future attack. Three decisions stand out to me. One is the choice to defend in the first place, two is a large number of stalkers in preparation for multiple oracles, and three is the decision to move out and stop defending these locations. In combination, these choices demonstrate that Alpha Star understands the metagame to a certain extent. It understands that there's a phase of the game where it's vulnerable to an oracle, a phase of the game where there can be two oracles, and a phase of the game where it can defend off the back of Warpins alone. This is fascinating. StarCraft is an imperfect information game, but I've long argued that imperfect information games trend toward perfect information. 
there's a finite set of optimal choices. As players gain more understanding about the game, they're eventually able to predict what their opponent will do. While it's true that opponents can always do something crazy, this is less of a concern, because the less likely an opponent is to select a strategy, the weaker that strategy probably is. That's why it's unexpected. The question then is how close can you get to perfect information? Humans have a hard time resolving this in a game as complex as StarCraft II, because there's only so many hours in the day to play. Alpha Star doesn't have that restriction. Will it eventually come up with the perfect response to everything? And will it eventually learn exactly what it needs to scout in order to build the perfect response? In other words, will Alpha Star eventually reach a point where it plays essentially the same, regardless of whether there's fog of war? One compelling possibility is that while Alpha Star will eventually figure out the correct responses to everything, a good enough player will always be able to deny scouting information and force it to make decisions probabilistically. For computers, this isn't very interesting, because their decisions are already probabilistic. But for humans, this will be a strong incentive to play your own game and leverage your own playstyle within the confines of a well-structured meta. Differences from game to game will stem more from personal style than differences in understanding of the core metagame. This could be really interesting to watch and play. Another interesting question is how Alpha Star will expand our understanding of StarCraft II's metagame. This past year, we saw a fascinating case study in meta development, in which EU Zergs figured out how to transition into later game tech in ZVZ in a way that Korean Zergs never did. Essentially, what happened is that the competitiveness of Zerg in Europe forced players to innovate and find stronger ways of playing the game, enabling them to get an edge over their Korean counterparts. Alpha Star League is the ultimate version of this. It can force its agents to play hundreds of years of games and find the absolute optimal strategies. What will we learn from this? It seems like we've already learned one thing, that oversaturation of your main base is more useful than we previously thought. But what else could we discover? Could we eventually get to the point where all balance patches are first run against Alpha Star to see whether the resulting meta is healthy? Or will we learn that it's just not possible for Alpha Star to approximate the mechanics of a human, meaning that the meta it discovers is always inapplicable to the human StarCraft experience? I think these questions have serious implications for StarCraft II's design. I've long argued that StarCraft II's mechanical streamlining has meant that its meta tends to get figured out very quickly, because there's more limited space for players to win based on mechanics alone. The developers counteract this in a number of ways, like attention asymmetrical mechanics and regular design and balance patches. But these really only work on human beings. Will we eventually get to a point where the meta flows not from professionals figuring it out, but from Alpha Star just telling us how to play the game? And what impact will that have on the StarCraft experience more generally? This is fascinating stuff, and it gets me excited about what we're going to see at the next demonstration. What the team has accomplished so far is really quite amazing. Alpha Star recognizes advanced techniques like mineral walking, it predictively positions units based on its understanding of the meta, and it follows reasonable build orders with no explicit instruction. I'm excited by what I see, and I hope that the team sees the gaps in Alpha Star's mechanical execution not as obstacles, but as opportunities. Opportunities to prove that Alpha Star is not just a mechanical beast but truly the smartest StarCraft player in the world. Alrighty, that's everything I had for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you followed me here and on Twitter and Facebook to receive regular content updates. The relevant links are in the description below. All the best, and see you next time.